Listeners and subscribers, how's it going? Hope all is well. California Carter back in the driver's seat. In my previous video, I, I kind of touched on where I've been. I, I That was actually supposed to be a sample episode, but then once I got talking and, and going, I, I didn't stop. And then I, I looked, listened back and said, well, the sound quality actually isn't that bad, so why don't we go ahead and upload this? So this video here, this episode is going to be less focused on what's been happening in the geopolitical spheres and um, more focused on what's been going on with myself. And maybe we'll get into a little bit of extra things as well. But I did want to, for those subscribers who are following me and wonder what's been going on, I wanted to say what's what's been happening. So for the past two months or so, uh, going on three months now, but for, for two of those months, I, I didn't have a Wi-Fi connection, no no internet connection and I had moved out of state, yes, out of California. Uh, I, we couldn't afford it anymore, me and my wife, to be honest. And if you've been following my mini-series, uh, Bye Bye California, then you know some of the reasons why we've decided to, to leave. The big one being, of course, we, we can't afford it. So we can't be some kind of faction there in California fighting the oppressive measures if we can't afford to keep a roof over our head. And I know there's this mass exodus of people both leaving and entering California, and you've got a couple of diff different demographics there and people who are on both sides of the economic scale in terms of uh, wages. But all that aside, I did have to keep my family in mind here, and we did decide to leave. So there is that. Aside from that, uh, I am now in the beautiful sunshine state of Arizona. So for those of you who want, maybe you can call me Arizona Carter. I don't plan on making a name change every time, if and every time I leave a state. But I think I'm going to keep the name the same just so we can maintain the viewership and not confuse anybody. We might do something different with the name later. Uh, this YouTube channel is a precursor to a radio project. Eventually, I plan on expanding this and we'll be doing podcasting. Um, I couldn't do that with the equipment I had before. I think I touched on it briefly. I know I created a video explaining what my setup looked like. But uh, I, I didn't have I, no cameras, no webcams, no microphones. I had an uh, old, clunky, beat-up, second-hand laptop that I was doing you know, my video editing on while I was using my wife's Mac just to record my voice. So it was, I, I had out episodes that were outlined that ended up being completely scripted and void of any personality. So now that I've at least got a microphone, maybe you've noticed this, I sound a little bit better. But now that I've at least got this microphone, we'll be able to produce higher quality content with more personality, more of me in the driver's seat, as we said. So yeah, the long and short of it is, um, I moved out of California and after arriving here on my new abode, I didn't have Wi-Fi connection for two and a half months. So that's, that's why I've been out of the loop, at least in terms of the circles of the alternative community. But that does not mean, as I said in my previous video, that I was living under a rock. I know that we're going through this government shutdown. I know some of the nefarious underpinnings that that signals. I also know that the optics are typically strictly politics when people consider issues like this. But as I stated in my previous video, and if you haven't check that out already. Um, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description. But as I stated in my previous video that when you remove the optics of just politics and you start to look at this from a multifaceted angle, you start to see some of the ways the totalitarian tiptoe is arriving literally on our front door. As a matter of fact, I think it's knocking at the door. And if you're one of those people who believe in a totalitarian new world order or they call it the beast system whatever name you've landed on for it if you believe we are essentially on a sinking ship not just in america but uh all across the pond then you know that there are agendas in the works that are stripping the people of their sovereignty not just individuals but entire countries nations states and while here in America we've seemed to reach an impasse over a border wall, one has to wonder if this issue isn't something bigger in scope, if this isn't a facade of sorts and there's something else behind this ready to be unleashed. Uh, I stated that I, I, I do think that this could either be just political theater or this could be precursors to something that's going to be happening in the future, just an indicator, some insight into what might be coming here in America. Now, I don't want to get lost on a tangent, and I don't have a script or an outline for this episode, so uh, we'll, we'll try our best to, to mitigate that. But I should make it clear, as I've stated before, it's hard to understate the importance of a physical impediment when we're talking border security. But this impasse, this gridlock, is not simply about a border wall. If you buy that, I have a bridge on the moon to sell you. 
And just to be clear, this has nothing to do with me being anti-conservative. Believe it or not, I, I'm a Republican. I'm a card-carrying conservative. And it's not because I invest so much value in voting and I think that it's going to change things. It's because I do believe there is a certain limited sphere of influence you have when you are a voter, especially if you're voting within your city and within your state. Those are things that can really count. I know once it gets a little bit bigger and, and grandiose, then it gets a little bit questionable. Just looking at some interesting facts, this $5 billion, 5.6, I believe, that Trump is clamoring for is only for 200 miles of wall, which is 10% of the 2,000-mile border that we share with Mexico. Also, Trump has said that we are getting billions of dollars from China due to this trade war. Well, I think we're doing very well. China's paying us tremendous tariffs. Uh, we're getting billions and billions of dollars of money pouring into the Treasury of the United States, which in history we've never gotten from China, as you know. It's been very unfair. Why not use some of those funds for the wall, right? Now, my over 600-mile trip from Northern California down to Arizona, there was plenty of walls right alongside the freeway, right? Those barrier walls that stop the earthen structures from eroding and the sound barriers to protect the houses from the freeway sounds. Yeah, we build miles of walls, sometimes 15, 18 feet tall. So building a wall isn't an issue. This five billion, this is absolutely a facade. Again, I'm removing the optics of stri strictly politics here. So I don't need any uh, right wingers coming here and telling me we need a border wall. I am a conservative. I'm a card carrying Republican. So I know how important a physical impediment it is, as I said. But you know, just talking about an issue like this can really highlight some of the difficulties people have when trying to disseminate information. And really, I'm talking about myself because when I'm talking, you know, it's hard to it's hard to articulate exactly what I'm trying to say because it comes from a couple of different angles. And what I mean by that is sometimes people are strictly worldly. So when you start talking about spiritual aspects, it doesn't necessarily mesh with their worldview. And then when you come across somebody who's spiritual or religious, they tend to try to write off most of the stuff that deals with worldly aspects. So really, you have those two extremes. They say, well, you shouldn't be talking about politics. That's nothing but the the puppet show anyway, so you don't know what you're talking about, when really there's a lot of aspects you can glean from politics that plug into things like a new world order, and you can help discern agenda that way. But here on California Carter, I want to encompass as many worldviews as possible because I do see things often from a spiritual side, a political side, a worldly side. Again, these things are multifaceted, so we have to encompass more angles. We have to remove our bias if we want to see more things, understand more things. I just think that that's a, a pivotal aspect, especially especially in the realm of information dissemination or alternative narratives, uh, alternative media, whatever you want to call this line of work. Some people call it the truth movement. Some people call it you know, conspiracy theories. Whatever name you've land on for this genre, which I just called journalism and independent citizens investigations, it's this kind of grassroots, homegrown movement that really can speak to other individuals who are just like you. You don't have to be some PhD. You don't have to be a novelist or, or a writer. And you know, basically, you just you don't have to be anything special. You just have to have a, a drive to want to tell the truth and, and, and g inform people about things that you think are important. And that's really that's where California Carter got its genesis from. But really, regardless of worldviews, as long as an individual can learn how to eat the meat and spit out the bones or eat the produce and spit out the seeds for you vegans, I think if you can do that, you'd probably be in a better position than someone who can't. See, I told you we'd get off on a tangent. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. I think I'm going to close it here. California Carter, signing off. Mm -hmm.